And I got a telegram before I left, and I said, uh, oh, I was stopped in Hong Kong to buy some clothes, mm -hmm. tropical clothes. I think I bought two suits for $28 or something like that. I don't remember. Mm -hmm. And I said, uh, I got this telegram, and I said, uh, on your way to Singapore, stop in Saigon. I said, there are a couple of stories there we'd like you to do. Uh, but we want you to want to go over to Cambodia and meet this new king. But we also want you to find out what's going on in Saigon. The French are leaving, blah, blah, blah. So I stopped in Saigon, and I really did this first interview of mine with a French foreign legion officer, a colonel. I don't even know if he was French because the Foreign Legion was made up of soldiers of fortune. He could have been German, Polish. Mm -hmm. He had all these medals. Anyway, we struck up a conversation. He said, um, well, and he said in French, to the effect that don't step in our ship. He says, make a, go home and tell your people it'd be a big mistake. And um, it was my first experience in Indochina. I think I'm the last living journalist who uh, reported the French departure. And then I went up to Bangkok and, uh, oh, I went to Cambodia and I met Prince Sihanouk, Nordam Sihanouk, who was just, had just uh, abdicated as king to become, get into politics and become prime minister. And he invited us to lunch at the palace and uh, he was marvelous. He was this real fop. I mean, he had this wonderful he always wore a business suit. I was, we went to the palace and I heard this high squeaky voice and I thought it was his, maybe his sister or his mother or whatever, but it was him. He had this very high pitched voice. And he came in, monsieur, and he had this wonderful lunch with fancy French wines and wonderful food. And we were talking about one thing or the other. He says, oh, monsieur, he says, the ambassador, he is the problem I have. I said, what's the problem, Mr. Monsignor? We used to refer to him as Monsignor. He loved to be called Monsignor, not Your Highness. He says, the ambassador, he is so arrogant. I said, arrogant? In what way is he arrogant, sir? Well, he has these dogs, and he walks these dogs, and he walks these dogs with his swagger stick. I said, what do you mean by swagger stick? And he gets up from the table, and he takes a leg of a chair and breaks it off, and he puts it under his arm. He says, this is a swagger stick. And he walks with his dogs in front of my palace every morning. He says, this is arrogant. Says, I do not like it. So I said, well, I don't know. I'll have to ask the ambassador about it. So the next day I went to see the ambassador, Robert McClintock. We were having a conversation about one thing or the other, and he was a very polished senior diplomat who felt he had no there was no justification assigning him to little old Cambodia. He thought he should go to be in Paris or London. I said, uh, Mr. Ambassador, I said, you know, the prince has a problem with you. He says, really? What's the problem? He said, uh, he thinks you're arrogant. <laughs> and I'll show you what he means. So I go through this whole routine with him. When, he, of course, he laughs and he says, God, he said, I never thought about it twice. He says, I have these two mastiffs. He said, the only thing I said, I had, I had them at the end of a stick you know, just to guide them. He says, okay, but I'll stop walking in front of the palace anymore.